Yeah! Now we're bringing out the big guns! Oh yeah! Ryan time. What's up? Our rank, it is copper, right? Talking about colony ranks. I mean, we did win big yesterday. It'll only be a matter of time before we make iron. That'll be it. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, uh -huh. looks like they're rolling out silver rank for this operation. All right, I think I hate his voice. Silver rank? What would they be doing here? Orders are orders. Can't complain about their help, though. Why is his voice so deep, man? We're moving out. Wedge formation until point D. Don't fall behind. Hey, what's up? I'm getting a call from Rold. Hey, Noah, sorry to be a pain in the bum, but I was wondering if you'd mind doing me one more huge favor. Sure, no problem at all. What's the trouble? It's just, I happened to skim over everyone's Collectopedia cards earlier and, well, it looks like a bunch of people are still a bit behind on preparations for the big mission. If you happen on anything they could use while you're out and about, would you mind throwing it to them using the cards? I hear you loud and clear. When we find the materials, we just register them on the Collectopedia cards, right? That's right, same way as always. Sorry and thanks again. That rolled sure like sticking his beak in other people's business. Did you say beak because it's a British thing or is it because you're a bird lady? Remind you of an anyone else we know, eh, Lons? Ha, bang on. Still, at least there's rewards attached to it. I say we go for it. That way everyone benefits. How very like Lons to weigh benefits so careful like. I just hate this Nopon's hair, too. <laughs> it's like, it just looks so stupid. Why does he have, like, actual hair? It sucks. What you say, Furball? All right, all right. Let's get our heads back in the game and be on our way to Alfetto Valley. Let's not lose our heads, though. The beak thing is a British thing? All right. Yo, were those flam eye? I love it, has character. What, the stupid hair on the no-pawn? Nah, hard disagree. The hair on the no-pawn is very dumb looking, I think. It just it just doesn't look no-pawn to me. In the map, accessible from the main menu, you skip traveled instantly, you traveled. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast travel. Monsters are split into four categories. Normal, elite, unique, and lucky. You can tell them apart by looking at the symbol displayed next to their level indicator. Normal enemies don't require much of a strategy in order to defeat as long as you're similar level. Elite monsters. Enemies that are formidable for their level. Great for challenging yourself once you feel a little more used to the battle system. There doesn't appear to be any difference that I can see. Unique monsters. Okay, they do have a little flare that you can see before even locking on, it looks like. I like that a lot. Incredibly strong foes that are very challenging, even when you're at their level. Going in without a sound strategy will not get you very far. Uh, enemy mo or lucky monsters. Enemies that you'll be lucky to find out on the field. I've already found two in the first two hours. Doesn't feel that lucky. They're as strong as normal monsters, but will give out far better rewards when defeated. That's I, li I like mechanics like that, where you can just happen upon something that's like a bigger boost in experience. It reminds me of, um... It reminds me of the Bakuras, I think they're called. The little stone enemies in Tales of Zillia, where every now and then you would just run into one, and as long as you carefully snuck up on it, you would fight it, and it would just give you a ton of experience, I think. I like that kind of thing in games. When enemies perform certain actions, you will see a red icon displayed. They might drop items or cause rare enemies to appear. It pays to stay observant. I'm so unobservant. This I do like the, the like little thing. flare. Psychophantic Lilith. Good. The name conventions are still there. Why is this one blue? Wood bunnet? Oh, that just means it's a better... Okay, this is the, like, elite enemy. They have the blue flare. Go, okay, guys. I understand now. Usual, Noah. We got the initiative. Yeah, Easy air slash. You're a lifesaver. No, Anyways, what I was trying to say before the uh before the whatchamacallit, before the cutscene interrupted me, get wrecked, loser. Is that uh I'm really liking the premise of this game so far. The characters seem fine. We've barely seen any of them, but none of them like stand out as like, oh I hate them. 
I hate the I hate the hair on the no pawn and his voice I'm not a huge fan of. But like as a character, he seems fine so far, which as long as he's decent, that's already better than the last two no pawns in Xenoblade games. I doubt he'll ever be as good as my boy Ricky, but you know, whatever. Perfect. Day's damage up. Let's go. Lons is getting low on health. That could be a problem that I might need to worry about in the nearish future. Uni, get some heals going if you could. He's got something for you. I did not realize there were this many bunnets around us. You are good at this whole healing business. Whoop. Ooh. Lon's dying could be a bit of an issue. Never mind. Lon's is back. We're fine. Uni's dead. We're not fine. This can't be happening. Oh, no. Might have bit off a little more than I can chew. How is this thing still alive? Die. Die. Come on. Swing. Oh, I killed it. Conquered. Big boosts. Now, the real problem is going to be dealing with these two. Can I res? Do I have any capability to res? Even better, how do I run? I'm out. I killed the one I was aiming to kill. Later, losers. You leave my fragrant grass alone. All right, that one on aggro. We're good. All according to Kekaku. Only healers can res? Ooh, I don't know how I feel about that. Attention. What, like, I need to join this fight over here? Little bunnet. Hey, this one means business. What does? This one? Die. I don't want to fight that level five. I'm not ready for that. Anyways, what I was trying to say earlier is, like, I'm liking the... I'm really liking the setting. The setting win right now seems really good. Characters seem fine so far. Haven't really seen enough of anything of them to, to you know... Have big, uh, oh no. It aggroed. There's a timer? Why is there a timer? Well, I mean, I'll give it a go. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? We die? Big whoop. Enemies broken away from you. Stop that. Oh no, another one aggroed. That could be a problem. I need, I want to topple this one because if you topple, it does more damage, doesn't it? Got the break. Topple him. Topple him. If you can. Daze. Daze. Pog. Pog. Big damage. That didn't do as much as I had hoped it would. There are too many bunnets. Aim at the, aim at the little bunnets. You gotta get the little ones out of here. Why, why are you trying to lock onto things so far away? Kill this thing. Dude, we're not gonna win this. I knew we weren't gonna win this. That's why I didn't want to do it. But then the little bun it aggroed near the big one. Anyways, I don't know how I feel about only healers being able to res. That sounds like I'll hate it long term, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and run. Sick music, though. Goodbye. Goodbye. Give me. Um, what was I going to say? Ooh, level 22s. The only thing that I'm, like, really worried about right now, obviously it's possible that, like, when I started Xenoblade Chronicles 2 way back when, I liked it at the start, and then I ended up really hating where the story went and where the characters went. Hopefully that doesn't happen here. I hope that I really love the story and that the characters, like, are amazing. But, uh, the, what I'm really, like, right now worried about is how enjoyable the gameplay will be. Because I really did not like the late game gameplay of Xenoblade 2. I remember getting like halfway through the game and then all of the fights just started to feel really samey to me and kind of boring and I didn't have fun. It wasn't as enjoyable as like setting up my eight arts in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and getting different combos to go off of depending on what character I was playing and then like chain attacking into oblivion and being able to do stuff like going for Melia's poison combo or maybe just uh, going for um, topple strats with Ryan Dunban, etc. and whatnot and so forth. So uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the gameplay in this game really takes off after a little while. 
You can go to options, target enemies in battle only to change it so you target enemies only in battle. I think that's what it was. Oh, I'm definitely doing that. Why is that not default? That should be default. Thank you for this information. Across Ionios, you will find groups of enemies fighting each other. You can engage in these battles by choosing a side to back up. Winning can result in special rewards. Although, wait a minute. Now that I think about it, if I'm in combat, what if I want to drag another enemy into the fight so there are more of us fighting? And then I can't target onto that enemy. But also at the same time, if I'm fighting three enemies and then the marker is like, hey, what about this enemy 40 feet away that's not part of the fight? That's going to get really annoying really fast. We know in the other spots something of interest. You can hold ZR to focus on that location. Something special is sure to happen there, so try and get near. I that actually sounds pretty neat. That sounds pretty cool. I keep hitting plus to open the menu. That's not the menu button, you dumb idiot. I get something new here. Attack stone. Boost auto attack damage. I'd rather have that than boosting maximum HP, to be honest. Uh, Medic gunner. I did not mean to hit your arts, actually. What do these do? Upgraded at rank 10, so there are ranks in the game. Field range of effects small. It just does attack up. And it makes like a range you have to be in for the attack up. That doesn't sound too good. Group heal, pog. This is your day's attack. Okay, ether attack days. Healing ring is your alt. AoE around user, regenerate are pretty good. I don't really like the sound of power ring. Heals nearby allies when heart, heart, when art hits to max of 100% of healing power. That sounds great. This just does damage. I want vortex, that sounds cool. Uh, calm down. <laughs> Boost damage to terrestrial life by 50%. I don't like things that are very specific. Uh, block rate by 20% could be pog. More, your HP is really low. Break duration wouldn't do anything on you, I don't think. Take the HP buff. And then you, it seems like you would really benefit from uh, block rate. I just realized it has that shield icon next to it that matches you because you have the shield icon next to your name you have this like wand symbol though but you were still able to equip now it doesn't show it actually is that just showing that it's like recommended like hey this accessory matches this type so it's a good idea is that what that means boost damage to aerial life by 50 percent. that freaking sucks i don't appear to be able to change it I don't think, I don't think, uh, Mambo number five is meant to be like a long-term character, maybe. I'm not sure. How do skills work? Boost dexterity by 15%, pog. Aggro generated by 25, critical rate by 15. Boost damage dealt by 70% when fighting a unique or boss monster. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't seem to have any ability to equip these or do anything with them, so I assume they just, they just exist. And maybe I unlock more later or something. Okay. All right, well, I, maybe we'll learn more about skills and what they can do later. I really hope we get something similar. Oh, this is really interesting. Okay, who will you assist? The wood? Oh, okay, so you can, like, maybe there will be some choices later in the game where you choose to side with one faction over another faction, which is actually a really neat mechanic. I actually really like that. Uh, but obviously, like, why would you attack your own dudes with the bunnets? So they're not going to let me do that, which is understandable. Okay. Affinity points 50. Yeah. Fight with <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We got you. You have this giant mech. How are you having trouble with bunnets, you dumb idiots? Die. Uh, I was going to say, I really hope that in this game we get something similar to the, uh... I'd like to get something similar to, like, affinity coins and skill trees in Xenoblade 1. I really, really loved, like, unlocking skills in Xenoblade 1 and then using affinity coins to, like, give other characters access to some characters' skills. I really, really loved that system. I don't remember if Xenoblade 2 had anything even remotely similar. Uh, Xenoblade X definitely didn't. But, uh, I would love something like that because I really loved that in Xenoblade 1. Hey, I did it. Pog. I want one of these mechs. Thanks, I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. I miss treasure chest monster drops from Xenoblade 1. Yeah, I feel that. I I can understand, like... Is that Lenny? It's Lenny. 
it's a lot more streamlined to just pick up the items as they drop around you in this game as opposed to um as opposed to like them dropping a chest and then having to open it after but there was really like there was uh something really satisfying about seeing a silver or a gold chest drop and then the like having the animation of it like opening up and then getting the rewards from it i really liked that feeling lenny are you alone here noah i let down jongo and the others tell me what happened my team was wiped out we ran into rampaging monsters at sonata saddleback that's grave bunnet ter country and they attack in swarms wow you should, like, say that a dragon killed them or something. Don't let their dying legacy be that they were killed by bunnets. That's just sad. You can change the default sort order by pressing minus to recommended. Just highlights equipment that's good for their class. Okay, so it's just a highlight thing. That's what I thought. Cool, cool. Yeah, there were so many that we were just overwhelmed. My power frame was broken and the others defended me. We were so close to the colony. I'm sorry. Noah, I want to ask you to do something for me as an offseer. Play for my friends. Please send them on, Jongo and Olivia on, and Marlin, before monsters get to them. Of course, can you give us the coordinates? I'll send the info to your iris. Thank you for doing this. Farewell, Melody. That feeling of chests is great, but when you're farming for a super rare drop from a gold, it's so demotivating to get wood chests over and over again. Yeah, but then, like, instead of seeing the item drop and getting mad, you can immediately see that it's brown, a brown chest and be like, this is already a waste of my time. And then I get to be mad immediately instead of having to look at what dropped and see if I got the right one or not, and then be mad. It's got its pros and cons for sure. <laughs> Bum, bum, bum. Give me. Mine. Noah, you don't want to go any further. You don't know what I want. This isn't the way to El Veto Valley. Come on, let's get the spark out of here. I gotta like go over here and do this nonsense. Yeah, instant mad versus delayed mad. I'm a very efficient gamer. I want to be able to be mad. Like that, in an instance. I don't know if my mic picked up me snapping there. Did you hear that? Can you hear that? Can you hear me snapping? But, uh, I want to be able to switch to mad instantaneously. Over there! What are they doing with Jongo and the others? Let's stop them. I do really like the weapon designs in this game. They're all very, like... They feel like like, high-quality Xenoblade 1 weapons. Like, when you get closer to the end of the game in Xenoblade 1 and you start getting, like, high-level high Intia weapons and Machino weapons, I really like the designs. Yeah! Oh, no. We're gonna... What the... Oh, they're level 5, dude! These these losers died to a bunch of level 5 bunnets. They don't deserve to be seen off. Honestly, like... They... We... You just need to, like... We gotta lie. We gotta give them some big hype story that isn't true. Because this is just embarrassing. I wonder if Uni is eventually, since she's like the, uh, she's the healer gun user. I wonder if, like, she's eventually, by like the mid to late game, gonna be like a worthless character. <laughs> when it comes to combat. Because Sharla, I love Sharla in Xenoblade 1. She's an amazing character, love her story arc and all. And she's a godsend in the early to mid game because she just lets you get away with stuff with her healing. But like when you get to mid to late game in Xenoblade 1, she's the least useful character combat wise. I wonder how that'll go for Uni. Yeah, we gotta say that these guys like died to territorial rope bard or something. Such is the Offseer's duty. Who got wrecked by a level 5 bunnet not too long ago? Whom? That wasn't a level 5 bunnet. That was... Uh, synthetic whatever its name was. Lilith. I don't remember. That's not a bunnet. It doesn't say bunnet. It says a name. It's 
It's crazy how Chaos can ignore the enemy drops. So I always have to pick them up while still fighting. I'm focused on killing the thing in front of me. The pickups will be there when I'm done winning. And then I can, like, just pick them all up at once. Easy peasy. Noah got some drip, though. I do really love this design. It's very good. I like the design of all of these characters, honestly. It it's really sleek, like the similar because it's a uniform. It looks really good. And thank goodness none of their thighs are showing. <laughs> With those awful pants that Rex has in Xenoblade 2. It makes me want to die. Mine. What a lineup of protagonist names, by the way. Shulk, Rex, and Noah. Rex, Noah, just normal dudes. Just normal names. Shulk? Ain't never heard that before in my life. Until that game. I would love Lons' oh, coat. Look over there. Lons, where are you? Why are you so far behind me? Pick up the pace. That's pretty pog coat. I like it. 